The most surprising thing for me when I started this journey would be a lot of childhood trauma that I thought I had overcome through therapy and everything just kind of resurfaced. And I did not expect that to happen. And I'll be honest with you, um, for a while, I didn't know what to do about it. Um, I just thought that if I just continue to say positive affirmations, just focus on my future with my daughter, that eventually those feelings will go away. But it seemed like the closer I got to delivery, the more the trauma was affecting me. And I realized how much resentment I had and honestly still have towards my own parents. They are divorced. And I mean, I'm, they've been divorced for as long as I can remember. You know, as long as my earliest childhood memory, I, I want to say I was like four or five. And I think from even from then, they had already were split up. And I think it was just they would be together for a certain events or whatever, family functions. I don't know. But it wasn't just that they're divorced. It was that they were not really involved with my upbringing. I was raised by my grandmother. You know, even my mom, when she would visit us, would refer to my grandmother as my mom. <laughs> She'd be like, you know, oh, you know, like, here's your daughter talking to my grandma and stuff like that. Um, referring to me. And I grew up, I think, very happy. I love my grandmother. I felt so loved. I didn't feel like I lacked anything. Of course, you know, I think when I started school, seeing other kids with their parents and their families and stuff like that, then, you you know, you start to realize like, wait, hold on. I don't have that family dynamic. You know, I'm raised by my single grandmother and all that. So yeah, you realize the difference, but still, I never really felt like I lacked anything. Until I got older, I took out student loans, and grants and stuff like that for college. And I did a lot of stuff on my own, basically. And um, without going to too much detail, I'm getting too emotional here. But there was just more that when I look back on that you could expect from your parents that bring you into this world. And so again, like I, like I said, I never felt like I lacked anything. And even in my older year, when I started to feel any kind of way, I thought I addressed it in, in therapy and, and stuff like that. And things issues that I had with my dad, issues that I had with my mom. I, you know, thought I dealt with it with the therapy and, you know, and I feel like I have, I mean, I don't think I'd be as successful as I am had I held on to, to all this resentment growing up or any hatred or negativity or and stuff like that. And I think I forgave them, you know, whatever. And so again, I just felt like I was okay. I was good. I was fine. I was moving on. I love my life, independent. I'm full of love and, you know, positivity and all that stuff. But after getting pregnant and again, getting closer to having my baby and all the things that I was already putting in place for my baby, where I felt like everything I was doing was for her, right? How does this impact her? How am I setting her up for success? How am I setting her future up so that my ceiling could be her floor, right? And so when I, you know, when I would think about all the things that I'm doing and everything in my life, everything, every decision I'm making, the main thought or the, the main factor in that decision making is how does it impact my daughter? That resentment towards my parents started to flare up where I would be like, why didn't they think of that? You know, like they literally just had me and I had to figure shit out. <laughs> That's what I felt like, right? And I just kind of felt like, why didn't they do all that? You know, so it's like for me, it's like breaking kind of like a cycle, like a generational cycle thing that, you know, this trauma and just breaking that for my daughter and just creating this life and, and doing everything for her. and how it's going to impact her. And so it was really surprising to me that all of a sudden at the, you know, the age 38, 39 years old, where I'm just like, why the fuck did my parents do all this stuff? Like, where was, you know, how come they didn't set me up? How come I had to pay for college myself? How come, you know, I had to pay for my own house, you know, uh, buy my own house and stuff like that. When I look at other people my age who were like, oh yeah, my first house, my parents bought for me when I got married or, you know, stuff like that. And, and trust me, I'm not hating or jealous of that. I'm I love that, you know, and, and I, I never saw it as like, oh, I didn't, you know, like jealous or anything like that. It was more of like, okay, I know what I have to do as a parent for my daughter. So yeah, I was really surprised by that trauma that kind of just came out of, I won't say came out of nowhere, but of how intense it was. And, and even now, I wish I could tell you that things were perfect with my parents and I, I mean, even now as I'm recording this, there's still issues there that a part of me doesn't even want to work on, if I'm honest, because I just feel like I want my focus to just be on the future and me being a good parent to my daughter and being there for her. And it's like, all right, when I think of how much energy I have to exert or I want to exert, I want that energy to go towards my daughter, my future, and not me up parenting my parents. <laughs> right. 
So that's like a, a TBD topic, I guess, of how that works out. But as of right now, I would say that was probably the biggest surprise for me. Another thing that surprised me was just my ability to be vulnerable. I am a hyper independent person. I am the kind of person to have like a crap load of grocery bags in my hands and somebody will offer to help. And I'm like, no, I got this. And like bags will be falling out. Things will be falling out. That's who I am. Um, I'm the person after my C-section, my doctor said, stay in bed. Do not pick up anything heavy. Was literally going to pick up heavy stuff. And my nanny was the one that's like, uh, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> I got this. Go rest. Um, that's who I am. And so allowing myself to be vulnerable um, and ask for help and be okay with not knowing what's going to happen next. That's another thing. I'm like type A. I'm such a planner. I've had my business for 13 years. I've had to be a planner and have everything planned out and structured and consistent and just letting all that go. Because um, I've said in another video that you can have all the grandest plans and your baby will shit on them. <laughs> right. And be like, yeah, like, yeah, we have to go at two o'clock. And like, at 159, your baby takes a massive dump and you have to change your diaper before you can walk out the door. So <laughs> like little stuff like that, right? Or they decide that's when they want to take a nap. Um, so I think being flexible and vulnerable were the second things that I found surprising that I was capable of being that way and, and not knowing and not planning so much and having somewhat of a guide, but allowing myself um, the grace to, to have flexibility. Um, so those are some of the surprising things, things that surprised me during this journey and um, this whole process.